Hello everyone, today we discuss active management of the third stage of labor, also known as Amstel. Postpartum hemorrhage kills uh, one woman every four minutes around the world and there are several interventions that have been put in place to reduce the risk of death from postpartum hemorrhage, one of which is what we are discussing today, uh, the topic of Amstel. So what are the steps involved in active management of the third stage of labor? The first step involves uh, administration of a uterotonic agent, which is oxytocin in this case. Oxytocin is um, ideally um, administered within a one minute of um, uh, delivery of the baby. Uh, before oxytocin is administered, of course, we have to check that there's no um, second baby in the uterus after um, uh, delivery of the first baby. So we palpate the abdomen, check that there's no other baby, then we administer um, the oxytocin. Oxytocin is the preferred drug um, for this um, part of the active management of the third stage uh, because there are several drugs that can be given. Uh, you can give um, misoprostol, we can give egometrin, we can give syntometrin, which is a combination of um, uh, oxytocin and egometrin. Um, the thing to remember is that oxytocin is the drug with, which is physiological and it's the drug which has the least side effects. The other drugs we've mentioned like uh, misoprostol will get the woman to have fever, it will get the woman to have nausea and vomiting, similar to egometrin. Egometrin will also cause nausea, it also cause vomiting, it will cause an increase in the blood pressure, so it's not advised that uh, egometrin is given in hypertensive women. And because of its uh, prolonged, sustained contraction, which can last even up to an hour, uh, um, it's not advised in women who are um, uh, heart disease uh, patients. It's not advised in asthmatic patients and so on. So oxytocin has the advantage that it can be used in all women uh, because it's, um, it's physiological. It's something that um, everyone has in their system. So the next step in the active management of the third stage of labor is controlled contraction. But before we do a controlled contraction, we have to uh, palpate for a contraction. The importance of this is that it reduces the risk of um, uterine invasion uh, because the contraction will assist um, a partial detachment of the placenta and the uterotonic agent um, works to cause that uh, contraction. So we have to wait for that contraction. That's why we gave the oxytocin. Once, once that contraction is felt, then we do controlled uh, cord traction. Controlled tra cord traction is done by putting um, the palmar surface of the left arm above the pubic symphysis and um, doing a steady uh, pull on the, on the umbilical a cord which has been clamped at this stage. So we need to avoid up and down movements because uh, this um, causes um, a weakness in the cord and the cord can snap. So just a steady uh, pull uh, on the on the placenta as we apply a counter traction or what is called as we guard the uterus um, uh, preventing uh, uterine uh, invasion. So, um, as we pull on the um, on the cord, uh, the placenta goes into those processes. It has detached. It is descending, and now uh, we reach the point of um, expulsion, where the placenta is just uh, coming out of the introitus. At this stage, we um withdraw the arm from the abdomen we withdraw the arm from the uh from the cord where we've been doing that traction we put both arms on the placenta and just deliver it out in a twisting um kind of motion the twisting uh kind of motion um makes sure that um the um, membranes are delivered and they are not um, uh, retained. 
after the placenta is delivered, the next step is to massage the uterus. We add the uterus um, to have a sustained contraction. This contraction will help us reduce um, the risk of bleeding. We know that contraction of the uterus is the major thing that stops um, uh, bleeding uh, from the uterus. So we massage the uterus after delivery of the placenta to aid in contraction of the uterus and also reduce the risk of uh, bleeding further. So after um, uh, that is done, then we have to check uh, for bleeding, uh, check that the placenta is complete and check if there are any vaginal tears that a woman has. And this is um, again us trying to make sure that the woman does not bleed. We catch the bleeding as early as possible. We check that um, everything is okay before we move on. After that is done, uh, we make um, the woman comfortable. We make her lie on the side. We make her start to uh, breastfeed as soon as possible. So what um, is uh, physiologic or expectant management of the uh, third stage of labor. So this is for us to compare the two. So in physiologic or expectant management of the third stage of labor, the placenta is not actively delivered. So what happens is that after delivery of the baby, there's no oxytocin that is given. Uh, the cord is not clamped until after the baby is uh, delivered. Controlled cord Core traction is, of course, uh, not used. Uh, the placenta is delivered um, by the woman herself, really. Uh, she feels um, the placenta coming, and she's just asked to, to push it out. If it's not easily coming out, uh, she can squat, and um, gravity will help uh, in getting that um, uh, placenta out. The baby is put on the breast as early as possible so that uh, the oxytocin that is released as the baby is breastfeeding will also help in um, contraction of the, of the uterus and also reduce uh, the risk of bleeding. So what are the benefits of um, Amstel? Uh, compared to expectant management. So generally, uh, it's said that uh, patients who have had um, active management of the third stage of labor who have a reduced risk of uh, minor postpartum hemorrhage, so they are likely to bleed uh, less than a thousand mils of blood uh, compared to uh, expectant management, where patients are more likely to bleed more than 1,000 mils uh, of blood. Um, it means that once oxytocin is given in the active management upon the delivery of the anterior shoulder, the need for more oxytocin after um, delivery of the placenta is reduced. It also reduces the risk of blood transfusion, reduces the risk of anemia, uh, it reduces uh, the duration of the third stage of labor, and it also reduces the risk of um, a retained uh, placenta. Expectant management also has some advantages. It means um, the woman doesn't get unnecessary drugs. It means that um, there's no risk of us uh, trapping a second baby in case that second baby is there. Um, uh, expectant management also facilitates uh, delayed cord clamping because there's no cord clamping until the baby is out. And we know the delayed cord clamping has advantages. And these advantages include um, uh, reduced uh, risk of anemia in the fetus because some blood is um, transfused uh, back to the uh, fetus from the placenta as we await cord clamping. That's why delayed cord clamping is generally uh, encouraged. The other uh, thing is that um, it improves uh, the amount of iron that the baby has in the first six months of life. It reduces the risk of uh, transfusion in the baby. Um, it also has, uh, in increases the birth weight for the baby by above 200 grams and also uh, improves neural development uh, for the baby, uh, probably because of the iron that is more in this baby compared to the one where there was no uh, delayed um, uh, cord uh, clamping. So 
those are the um, advantages and disadvantages of uh, expectant versus uh, active management of the third stage of labor. Um, and lastly, uh, some people argue that um, maybe expectant management might be better in, women, in some women, especially those women who have no uh, problems at all, healthy women with no uh, problems. All these drugs we are giving them might... Um, make them um, have all these risks uh, for uh, for active management of the third stage of labor. Because if the oxytocin that is given in active management of labor, it's possible that uh, the lower part of the uterus contracts and the uterus get trapped. Uh, many times when we are doing active management of the third stage of labor, sometimes the cord snaps and the uterus uh, is retained. So all these things are uh, uh, usually might not happen in a condition where we have um, expectant management of the um, uh, third stage of labor. So this is the summary of the active management of the third stage of labor. And um, the thing we need to remember is that sometimes people use a blend of um, active management of the third stage of labor and um, expect and management of the third stage of labor. So thank you so much for listening and we will see you in the next presentation.